In this session, I will talk about major changes in filing requirements. My colleagues and myself will show you how they are reflected in the new forms and how they are affecting you in preparation of filing work. The first change is about a new concept and satisfactory document. Actually, under the existing regime, Section 348 it says that the document is uh, not complete, it has been altered, or the signature is not complete or incorrect, then the registrar may refuse to register such a document. But the scope of such refusal is currently unclear. Under the new regime, we have introduced this new concept of unsatisfactory document. Section 31 lists out 10 situations where the registrar can see a document as unsatisfactory. So here are some examples. First, the document is not accompanied by the fee payable for the registration. This is very important, especially when you are submitted, submitting your annual returns. If the fee payable is not accompanied, we will see it as unsatisfactory document. The second situation is the documents or the signatures on the documents are incomplete or incorrect. They have been altered without proper authority. Third situation, the information contained in a document is internally inconsistent or is inconsistent with other information on the company's registrar or other information contained in another document delivered to the registrar. Actually, unsatisfactory documents, how are they handled by the registrar? According to the new section 35, if the registrar is of the opinion that a document delivered for registration under an ordinance is unsatisfactory, the registrar may first refuse to accept the document. And we are talking about personal delivery of the document to our office. Our staff at the reception counter can refuse to accept the document to right away. Or, once delivered, we refuse to register the document and return the document to the person who delivered it for registration. So when the document is mailed to us, we cannot refuse on the spot. But we still have the right to refuse to register. If the registrar has not received a, uh, the registrar can also order that certain um, amendments to be made to meet the requirements and then have the unsatisfactory document replaced. Now, the concept of delivery of documents. According to the new section 35, bracket 5, if the registrar has not received a document, the document is to be regarded as not having been delivered to the registrar in satisfaction. I have to emphasize that it affects the delivery of the annual returns. If you mail the annual returns to us, even if you have already sent the document, if the registrar has not received it, 
the person delivering the document cannot claim that he has discharged his duty in delivery. So I want to remind you, whoever delivers the papers should do so within a certain period of time and ensures that we have actually received it. A third amendment. It is about filing of amended documents. Under the current regime, there is no power to the registrar to amend or revoke a registered document. In order to streamline our registration system, we have been adopting administrative measures to accept certain mild typographical or clerical errors. Under the new regime, Section 41, we expressly give the Register of Companies the power to rectify a typo or clerical error contained in any information relating to a company on the company's register on any application by the company. In terms of practice in the new regime, to alter or rectify a typo or clerical error will be done in the same way. In other words, you can deliver an amended version and then underline the amended parts and then you can add amended or solding in Chinese on top of the page. We are going to issue an external circular to explain this further. The Fourth Amendment is about time limit for filing. Under the current regime, the delivery period is 14 days. It will be changed to 15 days in the new regime. So as to minimize confusion to companies and to streamline the whole procedure, for example, ND to A appointment or dismissal of directors and company secretaries and form ND to B uh, notification of change in particulars of the directors and company secretary or N or one changes in the office address. The fifth change is about the share value. We introduce mandatory no power regime. According to section 135, shares in a company will no longer have nominal value. The new regime applies to all local companies with a share capital. Requirements to report authorized share capital or its increase are removed. As for capitals or shares issued before the commencement of the new regime are deemed to have no par value. Amounts standing to the credit of a company's share premium account and capital redemption reserve become part of the company's share capital. And that is section 37 of Schedule 11. and all the necessary accounting adjustments should be done. And all the uh, amendments should be reflected in the documents to be submitted later on. My colleagues will take you through such procedures in greater details in a moment. The sixth change, statement of capital. The statement is included in a form relating to share capital in the following manner. It is required to be included in a return or notice delivered to the register for registration under parts 4 and 5.
and you will see that parts 4 and 5 will show the statement of capital. It is also included in a form relating to share capital. So if you would like to do a search and understand the latest capital situation of a company, you can see the latest update showing the changes of share, of cap, uh, share capital or the latest annual returns. So what is actually contained? There are two parts. First, some information of the share capital, the class, the currency, total number of issued shares, total amount, amount paid up or unpaid. Part B would contain the particulars of rights attached to the shares. Class of shares, voting rights, rights to participate in a distribution as respects dividends, rights to participate in a distribution as respects capital, whether the shares are redeemable. This part is only applicable to companies issuing more than one class of shares. If the company only issues one class of share, you do not need to fill in this part. The seventh major amendment is about the directors. According to Section 457, every private company must have at least one director who is a natural person. A grace period of six months after the commencement date of the new regime is provided for existing companies. You may refer to uh, Section 89 of Schedule 11 for the details. Concerning company secretary, there are some changes as well. According to Section 650, company secretary or senator person is only required to report a correspondence address instead of the residential address. For existing companies, the address of the company's registered office is to be regarded as the correspondence address of the company secretary, who is a natural person on and after the commencement date of the new company's ordinance. The above provision does not give rise to any duty to deliver a form ND to B for the change of particulars of company secretary under section 652. And this can be found in se section 118 record 6 of schedule 11. In other words, if the natural person company SEC would like to use the registered office address as her correspondence address, she does not need to submit ND2B. Assisting companies are required to report fire form ND2B if the registered office address of the company is not to be used as the correspondence address of a company secretary or the natural person. Second condition, there are subsequent changes in the correspondence address of the company secretary. Registration of charges and release. This is another area with major amendments. Section 334 clarifies that if a company maintains a deposit of money with another person, a charge on a company's right to repayment is not to be regarded as a charge on book debts of the company. This is Section 334 of the Ordinance.
a charge on deposits is therefore not registrable as a charge on book debts. For those from the banking sector, or if you're preparing certain registration of charges for the banks, please pay please pay special attention. Under the new regime, the company register will no longer accept any cash deposit and the charges as set off as registration. A certified true copy of the charge instrument is required to be delivered for registration with the new specified form NM1. The form and the certified copy of instrument will be registered and available for search by the public. The certified copy of instrument will not be returned to the presenter of the registration. As for the time for registration of charges, it will be shortened from within five weeks to one month. As for the notification process, according to Section 345, a certified true copy of evidence of this charge is required to be delivered for registration with a new specified form NM2. The form and a certified copy of evidence will be registered and they will be available for search by members of the public. The certified copy of evidence of discharge will not be returned to the presenter after registration. What I would like to add is that under the new regime, the company can still choose to see if they would like to complete this procedure of release. So this release is made, uh, still optional. Finally, about what you are quite familiar with, and that is annual returns requirements. Under the new regime, According to different types of companies, there will be different levels of amendments. Most of the companies, more than 90% of the companies are private companies. Concerning their requirements for annual returns, it, they are not changed. The date of return would be anniversary of the date of a company's incorporation. As for time for delivery, it will be within 42 days after the date of return. The only difference is that no more Form AR3, Certificate of No Change. As for public companies, what is the change? The AR should be delivered in respect of each financial year instead of a calendar year. AR is to be delivered within 42 days after the company's return date, that is six months after the end of the company's accounting reference period. So it is not the same as the anniversary of the date of incorporation. And this is a reference period. For example, the end financial year run is the 31st of December. Then the accounting reference period will start from the 1st of January and then it will last all the way to the end of December. This new arrangement only apply to the first financial year of the company that begins on or after the commencement date of the new company ordinance and all subsequent financial years. So we're talking about 18 months after the commencement of the new regime. So 
So we will follow 107 and 109 to submit the AR. Under the new regime, AR has to be delivered together with certified true copies of relevant financial statements, director's report, and auditor's report. And the registration fee should be the same for public companies. If they have late delivery of AR, they are subject to a much higher registration fee. As for guarantee companies, what are the changes? AR should be delivered in respect of each financial year instead of a calendar year. The AR is to be delivered within 42 days after the company's return date. And that is nine months after the end of the company's accounting reference period. An accounting reference period is interpreted in the same way as for public companies. That is for the preparation of the annual financial statement. For an existing guarantee company, the new requirements apply to the first financial year of the company that begins on or after the commencement date of the new company's ordinance and all subsequent financial years. In other words, Guarantee companies will, according to the new regime, submit the AR 21 months after the commencement. Before the enactment of the new regime, guarantee companies will still need to follow Section 107 and 109 in terms of submitting the AR. AR has to be delivered together with certified true copies of relevant financial statements, director's report and auditor's report. Late delivery of AR is subject to higher registration fee. Please pay attention to this. This is a new progressive charging scheme that we have introduced. So in case of any de late delivery, similarly, they're subject to a much higher registration fee. Just like private companies, this is a similar progressive charging scheme. So please pay special attention to this and submit your AR punctually. Thank you very much.